<laughs> you're listening to the barn church podcast hey guys you're listening to the barn church podcast and this is going to be our final podcast of 2022 Guys, this past weekend was incredible. I'm going to tell you that Craig really brought it home. He was talking about Covenant, and you are not going to want to miss what information he's sharing with us, the relationship between God and Abraham, God and everyone else. The covenant that he makes with his people is so powerful, even if that means he has to bear the brunt and the cost. Guys, it's incredible. Don't miss it. Listen in. Stay tuned because the TBC Sermon Podcast starts right now. Welcome to another podcast. I'm your host, Jared. Sitting here in the studio with Craig and Christina Stannert. They are, just like me, here for the evening because we got a crazy Christmas, ugly Christmas sweater party happening for the Yeshua Worship Creative Worship Department people. And they serve here in various capacities, and they are very well loved. They're also part of the training center. I love what you guys are accomplishing in the training center. I love what you guys are bringing every single step of the way. Under Phil and Lori Gargano, you guys are, bam, cream of the crop, keeping it tip top. It's awesome. But We're not here to talk about Christmas sweaters, which you guys got them on today, and they're pretty fantastic. I am not prepared. I think I'm going to end up printing out something ugly and just taping it to my shirt. Oh, you're going to cheat that. I'm going to cheat, yeah, (laughs) because I don't have an ugly Christmas sweater, but my wife doesn't have an ugly Christmas sweater either, and she says she was going to tape a mirror to the front of hers. I thought that was kind of ridiculous, but funny. So, anyway... Craig, Christina, introduce yourselves. Hello. Hello. Oh. All right. I'm Craig, and this is obviously my wife, Christina, here, and uh, we teach at the training center, like yeah. you said. So what do you guys teach at the training center? Why don't, you, why don't we plug that a little bit? Well, yeah, there's a variety of things. We started off teaching the foundational faith series, the yeah. Kenneth Hagin books, yeah. Faith, Prayer, Healing, Holy Spirit. Really, really enjoyed those books, the content and the revelation on faith that it brings out in our part in partnering with God by speaking his words. When we hear his word and we speak it and believe it, Mm -hmm. that's how faith comes by hearing and by speaking God's word. Amen. It only took us taking the class three times to kind of get the message, but it's okay. (laughs) You know what? It's life-changing. It really is. Yeah, it is. It very much is. And it's okay to go through things multiple times. Well, we went through a couple of times as students and then time. as teachers. So. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Well, we love having you guys part of it. It is an incredible journey that the training center has been on. Um, and man, I'll tell you, I'm excited about what 2023 is holding. Um, you guys have really risen to the occasion. And I love seeing how God has activated your gifts inside of you guys. It's been awesome. But you taught a great message this past Sunday, and this is the platform to kind of dive into more content, to see exactly if there's anything else. Um, So we're talking about covenant. Let's break it wide open. Craig, what you got? Covenant. You know, it's near and dear to my heart. Uh, You know, we practice it when we take communion. It's a a reenactment of covenant that uh, Yeshua gave to us, you know, prior to his death and resurrection. And um, it's based on a whole lot of understanding that we lose in our Western you know, culture, the context of it. They understood, you know, the subject of covenant much differently than we do today. Uh, I think, you know, Christina hit on it that, you know, modern culture looks at contracts that, you know, they have beginnings, expiration clauses. And, you know, sometimes you adhere to them, sometimes you don't. Uh, the context of covenant and the biblical covenant that you know you would find with the early Israelites, the first uh, and second temple Jews, it was completely different. Right. In fact, it it wasn't just unique to the Jewish culture. It was you you know it was widely prevalent. The Chaldean culture, the Hittite culture, the um, Canaanite culture, they all they all practiced some form of of a ritual covenant involving blood. 
because when you know the people back in the day would cut covenant the stakes were actually very high it's not like where we have our modern conveniences today where you know you can just kind of go to the grocery store buy your food or you know you can rely on the police to keep you safe or food shelter all those things that you know we take for granted today it was life or death survival back then and so it was very important amongst families, clans, nations that they would, you know, make covenant with one another. And it was something that they took very seriously because, again, a survival was at stake. And, you know, people across the Middle Eastern culture in that day understood very well what they were, you know, what they were talking about when they meant to cut covenant. You have anything to add there? I'm good. <laughs> And, yeah, I can go deeper. I, I'm the student; he's the scholar at home. So, of course, I ask all the I ask all the remedial questions just to kind of make sure he's hitting all his points. And I'll say it again: we learn together, and we learn from each other. We do. Um, yeah, it's it. I love, and maybe you can help me with this. Like, not that I'm having an issue with it, but there there has to be a difference between oath and covenant. And I'm sure you probably know that. Absolutely. So why don't you dive into that? Well, I mean, if you think about like what we use terms in English, you know, how the Bible got translated, you know, by either the King James Version or any of the other English speaking versions, uh, you, you see covenant, you see words like testament. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look at it in either the Greek or Hebrew terms, they're actually a very, you know, a a very detailed and um, I would say a more intense uh, take on what is exactly going on there. Um, in Hebrew, uh, they call it uh, barenth, barenth, and the connotation is to literally cut and, you know, kind of hard to pronounce in, in their tongue. I can, <laughs> I study as much Hebrew as I can, <laughs> but, you know, the, the pronouncing the grammar is just yeah. a whole lot more than I've been able to. A little bit to. more guttural. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> But you know we're we're improving. <laughs> That's awesome. But uh, even the, even in the Old Testament, they refer to the New Covenant, the um, Hadasha, meaning basically New Covenant, mm -hmm. and that connotation to cut, and it comes from that that Middle Eastern ceremony where they would you know they would sacrifice animals. Sometimes they would even cut themselves, let blood right. run together, which we right. you know had no today in even Western culture the concept of blood brothers. Correct. Yeah. But um, what was unique back in the culture in those days is when they would take these oaths, they would literally make the ceremony, they would cut, and they would literally walk through a valley in blood, their feet soaked in blood, you know, kind of pacing back and forth um, in a figure eight kind of form. And they would repeat the terms of the contract that they were making, the terms of the covenant. And uh, literally upon, you know, repeating the terms of the covenant, they would invoke a curse upon themselves you know if should they violate that covenant very solemnly you know they expected to be cut off just like you know the animals that they would cut in half for the ceremony right. they would you know look upon the you know the animals cut in half and the blood flowing you know be this done to me and much worse if i violate the terms of this covenant and that, that's how they understood it in fact you know the people when very much expected what was expected if somebody was violated in covenant they were literally bound by covenant to wipe the memory of the covenant violator off the face of the earth and it was it was brutal and it was it was real it was life and death it's you know not what we consider modern civilized you know culture today where you know you just don't do that you don't touch people you don't put hands on people no, they would erase the memory of that fan and that clam, you know, that family off the face of the earth for violating covenant. It was that severe. It was that intense. And that's not to say that's a God culture thing. That's, that's a human culture thing. That's what right. was common then. That's right. how they understood how to survive. And that's how they understood how to keep somebody accountable to their word because lives of whole families and clans, even nations depended upon it. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that um, because the difference, I think, for the listeners that may have not been able to be there on Sunday morning, um, for them to understand the difference between the Abrahamic covenant, the Davidic covenant, 
and then the covenant that was made in Christ's blood. And just using that right there, the covenant made in Christ's blood, I think, I don't think it's too far for most people to connect the dots from what you just said, that the difference between, and I know you're going to explain it because I'm going to ask you to, especially um, what God did as he passed through and he took that covenant upon himself, it was fulfilled in Christ. And so tell us a little bit more. Uh, from what you've studied, from what you know, um, about what God did in the Old Testament with that covenant. I think it's super powerful. I want to hear it again. Share it. It truly is powerful and personal. And uh, sometimes, you know, we think of God as just this big guy way off out there who, you know, smites us when we step out of line. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, um, this covenant demonstrates an absolute love of the people he created. Uh, he knew that the creation, you know, after falling was faulted. He knew that, you know, they had never been able to keep covenant before um, between themselves and him. And, uh, you know, what was demonstrated, you know, in the covenant that, you know, Abraham was involved in, you know, where, uh, you know, God, you know, first off, Abraham had heard these promises before. Mm-hmm. And, you know, his answer, you know, to hearing the promise was, you know, but God, I don't have any heirs. What are you going to give me? I have nothing to pass on. How, how can I become a great nation when, I, you know, I have a steward in my house and he's going to inherit. He was born in my house. He's going to inherit everything I have. And God said, no, he's, your heir is going to come from your own body. And so Abraham believed God, and that was a big part of the message. Yep. What God accounts as righteousness, that yep. the word of the Lord comes, and boy, is that another rabbit trail into the message. Oh, yeah. But, you know, literally, belief, when God, we take God at his word, and we believe him, uh, he accounts as it as righteousness he believe you know he believes in us and when we believe in what he says it it pleases him and things happen you know god moves in our lives people are you know people are changed um you know human nature kind of you know takes rabbit trails and we you know we don't often always remember we you know we have short memories we we will forget god will do something great and then the circumstances of life will come in and we'll take our eyes off of what was said, what was promised, even supernaturally. And the culture will just, you know, kind of go on its own bend according to, you know, the circumstances that they experience. But in that specific uh, covenant with Abraham, you know, involved, God knew ahead of time that Abraham nor his descendants, see, were going to be capable of keeping the covenant. Right. Uh, you know, serving him, of uh, being faithful to him. He he knew ahead of time. He wasn't like taken by surprise that you know when the you know the Israelites you know went out and you know did things that were against you know what he was telling them through Moses, what he, the Ten Commandments were written down as. He, he knew that yeah, this is kind of the way that humans are. They you know they live in darkness and they're surrounded by this darkness, you know, in the world. And when they look around them, they, they look for their own explanations. They look for their own ways. They look for what comes natural to survive and they get all kinds of ideas and they go off in all kinds of different ways. And they'll often forget what their God has told them and what their God has promised them or required of them. But when Abraham was a spectator here in that, you know, that smoking oven representing the you know, the presence of God, that flaming torch, you know, passing back and forth, you know, that's the word of God represented right there, passing back and forth in that covenant. He had basically made a covenant with Abraham, telling him, you know, in his promises that I'm going to make you a great nation, all nations to be blessed because of you, and just, you know, on and on and on, talking about the promise repeated. And when Abraham asked, why, how am I going to know this is going to happen? God said, look, here we go. This is something you're going to understand. 
and you know came right down to Abraham's level, his cultural understanding level, and performed the covenant ritual as they understood it back then with him, literally citing the terms of the contract and invoking a curse upon himself. Again, knowing that this it, promise couldn't be kept yeah, by people. It, Abraham would never be able to fulfill that. Even in his wildest imagination, he would not be able to fulfill that contract. And that covenant that God took upon himself, he bore the consequences on the cross. Absolutely. And that's that's the that's the Old Testament Christophany that shows us the New Testament Jesus. And I think that's the most beautiful representation of in the old, as you said, the torch is, is the word. And as we hear in John, we know in John, the word was God, the word was with God. So Jesus walked that road for everyone else. I think that's the coolest. If no one else gets anything from this podcast, it's that Jesus was represented in that covenant in the old Testament. And he, because we all, a lot of us here, Old Testament is Christ concealed. New Testament is Christ Absolutely. revealed. And so that was a concealment element of the Lord. He's saying, I'm not showing my hand yet, but I'm going to show you my power and I'm going to show you my ability to keep a covenant to a thousand generations. And he was able to keep that covenant and Christ made it all possible by willingly dying on a cross rising the third day and giving us the victory for to live life. It's beautiful. And I love what Paul says in Hebrews 6. He said, for example, there was God's promise to Abraham, because we were just talking about that, since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. And when he made that covenant, it was a done deal. God said, I will bring it to fruition. All you got to do is believe, and all you got to do is obey. How easy. We got the easiest part of that. That is the coolest thing is we, God made it so easy for us, and he took all the costs. And all he asks for is belief. When he speaks, <laughs> believe it. That's it. That is it. How? What a great trade. So I have a question. Would you consider oath being a synonym to covenant? Uh, it, it, it's kind of, it's a weaker synonym. I mean, you know, but you it's cover the basic covenant, but, you know, covenant or barenth in Hebrew, barenth adasha, or, you know, in Greek, the diathanki cane. The covenant between a you know king and his servant. That's actually it's far more specific and far more relatable to what they're talking about here. You know, again, I emphasize in our modern culture, we completely lose the context and the severity of these covenants made. Yeah, no one wants to take a covenant, but I agree with you. Covenant is a strong word. You don't break a covenant. It's the, to me, it's the difference between a promise is a weaker oath, an oath is a stronger promise, but an oath is a weaker covenant. Covenant is everything. You, when you have a covenant, you don't break it. You're done. You've, you've signed it up for life. Come hell or high water, it's, it's going to be what it is. And, you know, God, like you had mentioned before, using his own name, swearing by his own name, uh, a lot of people don't understand, you know, the Hebrews, they would even... They wouldn't even necessarily say the name of God when yep. they were speaking or talking. Hashem. Would, Hashem, yep. meaning the name. Yep. And, uh, you know, even he himself, when he would speak to, you know, the people, he spoke to Moses. He, he uh, told them, and I mean, they, we translate this in English as angel, um, you know, because in the Greek it's anglos, which just mm -hmm. means messenger. Yep. But the Elohim, which that's how they said it in Hebrew, with the, it's either plural or the one Elohim, mm -hmm. but the Spirit, my name is in him. Listen to him. He won't forgive your sins, but my name is in him. And it's, it's powerful, you know, when he's, you know, speaking to us. But his name carries a whole lot of weight, more so than, you know, anything in our own lives. We can't, we can't swear or put anything on it. But when he puts his name on the line, and it's right in line with his word. 
only one thing that God considers equal to himself, and it is his word. And you nailed it on the head, Jared, with we have the easiest part of it all. He's he's done everything and left us with free will and choice to make the right. See, this is the kind of decision. teaching, right? It, it, this is the kind of teaching that the, the church needs to hear because they need to understand that the simple gospel of grace in Christ Jesus has simplified and paved a gold pathway to God, just the access to God. Now, once you get on, once you get on that road, it could be bumpy. There's no guarantees because once you start living a life of, with Christ and in Christ, the, the, Oh my gosh, it could be so difficult, but well, it is that, so it worth be. it. You can rest assured. That's why we there I talked go. about on Sunday. Um, the deeper, the deeper your love and relationship is with God, the more the enemy is going to ramp up. That's true. Because he Amen. knows, like, like I said, he knows he's about to lose more. He's about to lose more that are following God and doing what, you know, the f- the five senses is really, you know, kind of a dangerous game board that, you know, we kind of live in the plane with, you know, yep. sight, sound, touch, feeling how we feel. And, you know, those strings get pulled, you know, both ways. You know, we can lean into <laughs> Boy, God do they ever. <laughs> and, you know, he will direct us. He'll lead us, you know, as, as if you continue to acknowledge, you know, him in all your ways that he'll direct your path. But then what literally comes natural is to survive because that's the choice that, you know, Adam and Eve, they made when, you know, in the garden with the knowledge of good and evil, it's either relationship with the creator or knowledge, knowledge to survive. And we're bent towards that second choice to survive constantly. So what do we look to, to survive? Well, we look at our environment, our surroundings, things that are going on around us. The situation looks like, hey, we're in trouble here. We're about to be killed or we're about to lose big time. You know, let's dig in because something bad's going to happen. Or, hey, I really want that and I'm going to get it and I'll do anything it takes to get it because that's going to be great for my survival. And those strings are, you know, are pulled by other forces that are completely opposed to God. You know, that compulsion survive do whatever you have to do to survive and we don't think about this as a satan enemy demonic uh, idea to do it because it's only natural to survive but almost everything that we in the natural do it's susceptible to forces that are beyond us and that are not aligned with god i would say that's why the simplest thing is even surrendering and submitting like we've talked about (laughs) <laughs> your biggest fan yeah one of my uh, um, my children my youngest child is trying to break in to <laughs> the studio <laughs> that's why um even we need him to help us surrender because um the enemy doesn't want us to the enemy tries to convince us and feed us that oh you're a quitter you're not worth that you know so um even just surrendering and submitting we need his help with because the enemy knows I, you know that's what's in your ear if you surrender you quit you're a quitter you're worthless you gave up that's right so he, in d- faith, he doesn't tell you if you surrender and, and let him carry in, you through the storm yeah in faith god asks us to do something completely unnatural believe him at your word at his word in comparison ignore your circumstances if he said something you believe it if it's a if it's a lake and there's a big raging storm in the sea and he says, we're going to the other side, you believe him. Right. And that's what he expects from us. If I said it, believe me, it's true. But, you know, circumstances get loud to us because of what, you know, we, we live in. And you're a man that works, you have authority, obviously, because you work as a peace keeping officer of the sheriff's department, correct? That's part, I I may not be necessarily doing it complete justice, but you have authority. When you get onto the scene, whatever that might be, you have authority and people have to take you at your word. I think the biggest flip of the switch for most people is that they have to recognize him 
as the supreme authority before they can trust in him. You can only do that by having even just faith as small as a mustard seed. You're never going to be able to bypass, go from an agnostic belief to a full on, I truly believe that God, the king of the universe, the Lord of the universe is truly here and he wants a relationship with me through his son. That is so, it's easy for us, but I know there's a lot of people and I hope they listen to this that can't make that leap from that to trust and believe and do not doubt. You have a great metaphor about authority. Okay, good. <laughs> Our minds. Are- oh yeah, I mean, there's a great parallel there. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, we talk about authority. We talk about the authority of the peace officer, the deputy, mm-hmm. and um, very much in line with how you know we obtain our authority through Christ, and it's His authority. And because we are in covenant with him, we are a partner. We get to speak as a joint heir. God gives us that ability to speak his word. Which you actually said is we are all deputized, which was, he's like, I'm getting there. (laughs) I am, yeah. (laughs) The big picture is, you know, as I function under authority, the authority to enforce the law in our in our county is actually there's an elected official called the sheriff. Yep. He bears all the authority of that office. You know, as deputies, we swear an oath to uphold, you know, the office of that authority, um, the constitution and the laws of the state of Michigan and our county ordinances. But in that oath, we are then deputized with the sheriff's authority to enforce law, to maintain custody to you know enforce the rule of law right. however that looks you know as though and you otherwise yeah, right but we function under the sheriff's authority yep. you know in christ we don't function you, you get in trouble when you function and try to function under your own natural authority <laughs> trying to you know manipulate <laughs> right. people's behavior right or do what you perceive is good or what you think things should be but there is one authority and that is the authority of christ in his word that when you speak it, when you speak that truth in love, that is when you are on solid ground, speaking from authority. That's the voice that, you know, that the enemy, the demons fear, is that spoken word authority. Because it's, they don't necessarily recognize you as an individual isolated from God as one human. But when they encounter you, you encounter them within the scope of that authority, they see the authority that you carry. You're in covenant with the one true God. And they literally, you know, just like, you know, you get into a dangerous situation and the hairs on the back of your neck stand up and your knees start to shake. That's what they go through. When you speak God's (laughs) word and you go into a situation, you carry an a tremendous amount of authority standing on God's word, being in covenant with Yeshua Jesus. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. i think it also puts us at our most vulnerable too though like i said with when it comes to the enemy because he knows you're growing stronger we went through a season where i was just like wow we're really growing and learning and yet we are really under attack here and you You step out on your own just a little bit and it it feels pretty precarious your circumstances are always going to try and drive you right back into natural behavior always and it's against our flesh to have that that faith, you know, we talked about in all of our classes, fear and worry cancel out our faith. And yet our flesh tells us, well, this is reality. This is something that I have to physically take care of. But what, what it's doing is it's, it's gnawing at our faith and trying to weaken it. That's right. And, you know, the faith that we talk about is not just something where it's like, you know, hope and I, I think in. And I believe it because that's what I want. It's the literal faith that comes when you hear that spoken, you know, rhema word of God or that, you know, you, you read that logos becomes rhema, meaning that it's you encounter the word of God. And when you stand on that literal word of God and you speak it, you speak it to your circumstances, you speak it to your life situations, you speak it to your environment, that carries the authority that moves mountains, that changes things. Amen. And 
we ourselves, if you can just maintain a life forever in that space of authority, we can do great things. It's just, you know, it's always a challenge in our natural condition, but it's something that God makes available to us. It's possible. It just takes the earnest desire and discipline to constantly maintain that space where God is first and foremost in his word before your eyes. And you're not going to move from this space. It's, it's, it doesn't come naturally. It has to be um, something that you discipline and walk by faith, really, truly believing in what it is that he says and living accordingly. Amen. Man, there's so much that we could. <laughs> there's my little girl trying to get into the She's door. She's telling again. me the time's up. <laughs> she, she wants she to eat. Is, she does want to eat. <laughs> there's so much to unpack. Like, dude, I could sit here and, and rattle your brain for probably another three hours, but we have a party to get to. We have ugly sweaters to judge. We have white elephant gifts to pass out and community to love on. So, um, man, I. This is fantastic. I, I hope everyone hears what you have just brought forth. I want them to understand, if anything, the authority we have in Yeshua. Period. Because God made, made a way. He made a way. It's so stinking simple. He made a way. We don't have to strive for it. We just get to thrive in the knowledge of who he is and the finished work that he did on the cross. So we get to just be joint heirs with him in heaven. It's such a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing. You don't have to strive. I don't have to strive. Christina, you don't have to strive. No one has to strive anymore. We get to be in the full covenant with God, with our Father. And we don't have to feel sorry for it. We don't have to feel shame for it. We don't have to be fearful. We're his kids. As simple as that. Absolutely. That covenant was made between, again, Father and Son. It's It's been fulfilled. It's forever. It can't be undone. It's It's, always there. It's always there. And all you have to do is have covenant with Yeshua, the Son, the sal- you know the means to our salvation. That you know, if you have covenant with Him, if you take Him in, you believe in Him, being the that bread of life, the way that we take Him in, believing, and you know, literally, like when we do communion, you drink that in, you seal that covenant, you yeah. declare He fulfilled the covenant. He died. He was sacrificed. You declare it, and He rose again. And then you you seal it, you ratify it when you take in you know you take in that wine you know by his blood shed fulfilling that covenant. It's literally I mean sometimes it it seems easy and some sometimes people you know make it okay well it's something that okay we we just say the words and we ask him into our heart. The deeper part of it is to literally take in mm-hmm. what it is that he said, yep. what it is that he did, and then to make an oath with. The son, the one who completed the covenant, the one who did it, basically just literally saying, you did it. I believe you. And I want to follow your way. I want to follow you. I want your example in life. I want to listen to you. I want to pursue a relationship with you that's real. That kind of relationship, you know, brings you close to the, you know, the heart of the Father God, because in Jesus, in Yeshua, there's almost no distinction there. There is no distinction. You're right. a joint heir. That's right. Because God honors covenant. Amen. That is such a great place to stop and uh, put a pin in this, man. Uh, for everyone that's listening, uh, we know that Jesus probably was not most likely born during the Christmas holidays, but we do take this time with our families and with our loved ones to remember Jesus, to remember Yeshua. Take a moment, everyone that's listening in podcast land, just take a moment and remember the sacrifice. Remember what he accomplished. Remember what he has perfected. He was the perfect sacrifice for us 
there was nothing else and there will never be anything after it. it was complete. It was done. It was finalized. And if you do not have a relationship with Jesus, I would ask that you seriously take a look at what he did and what he has accomplished. And if you would just put your hands up in the air, look to heaven or say this in your heart and go, God, I believe what you did. And now I'm going to have covenant with you through Yeshua, your son, and I'm going to follow your way. Craig, you put it perfectly. That is exactly what people need to do. And it's a pathway for the rest of their life. And then Yeshua will take them from glory to glory to glory to glory. And he will perfect them. He is the author and perfecter of our faith. And he will take them on a journey of their lifetime. So once again, this is our last podcast of 20. 22. We will see you on the second week of January. Have fun with your family this holiday season. Remember Jesus. Remember what he accomplished. Love on people. Give gifts, not just of the earthly kind, but of also the spiritual kind. And we will see you next year. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Yep. Baruch Bashem Adonai. Perfect. God is moving and desires to move in your life too. We know listening to this podcast is one of many ways He can work in your life. The Barn Church and Ministries exists to create environments where people encounter Christ and are empowered to advance the kingdom. Check us out on the web at thebarn.church or follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at The Barn Ministries. Listen to this podcast on Amazon, Apple, Google, iHeartRadio, Spotify, or Spreaker podcast platforms. A new podcast is posted every Friday. If you would like to reach us, send us an email to podcast at thebarn.church. Visit The Barn Church in St. Joe, Michigan. Service times are Sunday at 10.30 a.m. and 6 p.m.